Just keep following it. Passing test. Imagine a straight line going down the, the pavement there. After test. Oh, yeah, so sobriety. So, so so Yet he was still arrested for driving under the influence. Turns out the Fort Collins officer behind this arrest had a history of arresting people who had no alcohol or drugs in their system. I told him he was making uh, the biggest mistake of his life. Denver 7 is digging deeper tonight, asking the police chief why this officer went under his radar. He fell short of expectation. This officer let our community down. Tumbleweeds fly across Colorado and power lines go down as heavy winds pass through the state. And waiting for a safe place to live. We've had some some rodents in, in here that we've had to catch ourselves, you know, with no help from anybody. Volunteers of America respond to concerns from a tenant who says her apartment building has consistent problems. The fact of the matter is, is if there's an issue, we want to solve it. Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us on Denver 7 News at 6 tonight. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. A Fort Collins police officer whose specific job was to enforce DUIs didn't have a very good track record. No, officer Jason Hafferman arrested people for DUI who were not impaired at all. An internal review by Fort Collins police revealed that Hafferman had made nine incorrect DUI arrests in less than a year. And in all those nine cases, blood work revealed there were no drugs or alcohol present. Hafferman was placed on paid administrative leave during the investigation and has since resigned. Denver 7's Bayan Wang spoke with one of the victims arrested by Hafferman. He's also going in depth, asking the Fort Collins police chief how Hafferman's wrongful arrest slipped through the cracks. Keep watching, all right? I know this is kind of long and tedious. Tedious in this April DUI case is an understatement. Hey, keep on it. Derek Groves was on his way home just keep on it. when he lost control right of his Tesla so veering into an embankment. I just don't like this is a, I'm just, I'm you, After observing Groves, you are under for driving under the influence. a pattern of unjustified arrests now coming under fire for former Fort Collins police officer Jason Hafferman. All the results come back on this, you guys are going to see. I promise you. And Groves made good on his promise. His toxicology report showed no signs of alcohol or drugs in his system. His case was dismissed. I guess Christmas came early. Um, got to see the person that falsely arrested me get off the force. Body cam footage shows Groves pleading with Hafferman several times. I told him he was making uh, the biggest mistake of his life. A mistake Hafferman has made many times before. According to the Fort Collins Police Chief, the department's suspicions began earlier this year when a review showed that nine of Hafferman's DUI arrestees had no drugs in their system, had no alcohol in their system. So in May, Hafferman's assignment got changed to patrol. In September, he was assigned an administrative job. In October, he was placed on leave before his resignation was announced Friday. We found um, various policy violations and in the end, really just lost confidence in his ability to, to continue doing a job as a Fort Collins Police Services Officer. Hafferman was with the department for more than five years, spending two years on DUI enforcement assignments. The Colorado Inn reports Hafferman was involved with 191 DUI arrests last year. We fall short of expectations from our department, and, and we see that officers are making judgment calls that aren't supported, you know, for from just, you know, subject matter experts looking at it and saying, I don't see that same thing. These are tough days. Fort Collins Police Chief Jeff Swoboda says the investigation is now looking into other departments, examining the entire process of how these cases came about. Have you apologized to any of the people who were wrongfully arrested by Hafferman? No, but what I, what I have done and what I will continue to do is encourage, you know, if people want to talk to me and, and, and some do and, and reach out to them, because each one of these, although we're talking about them as a group, each one of them are different. You know, individual, you know, conversations absolutely will be had. As for Grove's next uh, steps, he's taking the case to a federal court on grounds of civil rights violations. Bayan Wang, Denver 7. If you are pulled over for suspected DUI, regardless of whether you've had anything to drink or not, it's important to know your rights. And I looked into this for you this afternoon and found the following advice from top DUI lawyers. First, they say be polite. Exercise your right to remain silent when appropriate as well. Everything you say during this stop can be used against you. Also, lawyers strongly suggest you refuse to take the field sobriety test or a breathalyzer test when pulled over. Now, those are voluntary and they cannot be used to prove guilt or innocence in court. However, 
If you are arrested, you are advised to take that breath test at the police station because if you refuse that, a jury can be informed of your refusal and you could automatically lose your license for one year as well. Well, the winds were howling outside across Colorado today. Viewer Carlos shared this video of nonstop tumbleweeds on his drive today on Highway 34 just east of Fort Morgan. Don't want to hit one of those. In fact, today's dust storm warning in northeastern Colorado was the first time in eight years that it's been issued by the National Weather Service in Colorado. Meteorologist Stacy Donaldson joins us now to talk about all that wind. So we saw wow. 70 miles per hour in some spots. We did, and up to almost 90 miles mile an hour <laughs> winds off to our west around wow. Rocky Flats. You know how it gets right along 93 there as you're headed out toward Boulder. That's where those winds were close to 90 miles an hour today. Birth and Pass 70 miles an hour, Aurora 64 and Longmont 54. So no matter where you went across eastern Colorado today, those winds were strong. Right now we have 48 mile an hour gusts in Broomfield across the eastern plains between 25 and 45 miles an hour. And now this cold front, which caused all of our problems for today with the wind is pushed off to the east and so all of our wind watches warnings and advisories have expired all we have left is an avalanche warning that's in effect until tomorrow morning here for our northern and central mountains as for tonight in denver we'll have those temperatures in the 30s through 9 p.m into the 20s after that with an overnight low of 20 degrees tonight and partly cloudy skies now we'll talk about whether these winds will make a recurrence as we head into our weekend with your complete weekend forecast coming up we'll see a little bit stacy thank you the volunteers of america known for all the good they do throughout Colorado, but a tenant living in one of VOA's housing communities says the group's not living up to its mission. Denver 7's Micah Smith is in Denver's Rhino neighborhood and is going deeper on the maintenance issues at Brunetti Lofts. Windows we have to tape up just to keep bugs out. This main door doesn't close, so if it rains, it literally just floods. Brunetti Lofts tenant um, Chanel Hughes says as you walk around her home, you'll find more issues. These are some of the worst ones right here. And Hughes says even shared spaces have major problems. There was so much trash on the playground. We've had the trash room be um, full and we were unable to put our trash anywhere for days. Hughes says she moved into this affordable housing building because she needed more space for her family and wants to eventually buy a home. Brunetti Lofts is an affordable housing program that um, residents within, they could stay here for five years and within that five years, um, they help you to um, become a homeowner. But Hughes can't see herself living here for five years. I'm speaking out because <clears throat> Even though it's really scary, <laughs> I, I can't, I don't know where else to go. Frustrated with the situation, Hughes filed a report with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. They inspected the apartment and did come up with a list of issues. Volunteers of America operates the Brunetti Lofts. Their goal is to put a roof over the heads of people who might otherwise be homeless. They told us they had no record of formal complaints from Hughes and wish she would have reached out to them before calling HUD. Contact the property manager, contact uh, maintenance, leave a note. You know, anything in writing is great. Communications manager John Ewing says VOA was aware of the trash issue, but hit some roadblocks trying to replace a vendor who left them in a lurch. The vendor we'd worked with for years and years and years sold his company. Sold his company to people who were working out of state, and it became very, very, very difficult to get them to come in and pick up the trash. Ewing says they found a new vendor, and the issue was resolved in two weeks. But Ewing says in general, Brunetti Lofts has a unique set of challenges. A lot of these people are people who, well, all of them are people who were experiencing homelessness. Coming off the streets, coming off of bad situations, and... It takes a long time to readjust. Ewing says if there's an issue in a unit, they want to solve it. I can't promise it'll get done that day. It'll get done in a timely manner, though. We're on your side. You're living here because we're on your side. We have your back. But Hughes says it doesn't feel that way. They've definitely failed us. This is not what we were sold. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Well, Denver 7 was proud to be a part of the big setup for a precious child today. They're having a big Christmas extravaganza. It's a huge holiday giveaway for 650 families who lost everything in the Marshall Fire. So Jessica and I both will be out tomorrow to help with the giveaway. And this morning, Morning Anchors Brian Sanders and Nicole Brady were out there to help set up the shopping floor. And one of the first thing families will be able to do tomorrow is get a family photo with Santa. After that, they'll be able to come into the event, 
they'll be able to do all their arts and crafts. The kids can go and decorate their stockings and get candy in their stockings. They can decorate their ornament that they'll then put on their Christmas tree that they're receiving from us. From there, they can also go and do cookie decorating. So we have an amazing group. There will also be hot chocolate and a gift wrapping area. So such a big thank you to all of you who donate to Denver 7 Gives to help make this wonderful event tomorrow possible. I am an artist and an artist doesn't surrender their right to speak freely. The right to refuse service is going before the Supreme Court. Another Colorado business finds itself in front of the high court in hopes to be able to refuse service to same-sex couples. I think it's an uphill battle for the state of Colorado for to prevail in this case. We're going in depth on the ripple effects this ruling could have across the U.S. And just in time for tomorrow's knockout match, Team USA's star player is ready to face the Dutch.